friends. Welcome back to another episode of Two Idiot Girls. Ooh. How you doing? Since the last episode? Great. <laughs> we, you may notice we're wearing the same outfits. That's because we're filming the same day. <laughs> I had to burp at the same time. We're filming in the same day, okay? But don't worry. I have plenty of Zoomies to share with you to fill this episode. Hopefully. I'm sure I do. So the first Zoomie that I wanted to talk about is SZA's music video for the song Snooze. I, first of all, I've loved that song very much. That's been in my top three since that album came out. Me too. Uh, Fun fact, when the song, when the album dropped and Blind finally came out, the full version, Mm -hmm. Drew said, literally you. Anyways, but Snooze (laughs) is my favorite song on the album. So I couldn't believe it. It was a, it's a read, but it's also true. I, you know, I don't know the words to the song. So I saw this guy Did look you? up the lyrics to blind right now. Oh, blind. Yes. I'm That's sorry. I, I thought you were talking about snooze. No, yeah. Blind. Yeah. no, uh, no, I know that was a read. Are you telling me that? <laughs> no, I'm saying, but true. Yeah. That's why it's a read. Yeah, sure. Sure. Mm-hmm. But, um, what was I going to say? It's been rumored that she's going to do a snooze remix with Justin Bieber. Yeah. I, I thought so too, because I saw people talking about it. Um, because they were fucking gagged at him in that video. He looked so goddamn good. It was insane. I saw someone say like, he has the exact build and look of a white guy that would date someone who looks like (laughs) this. And I was like, that's real. I was sharing (laughs) the pictures of it in my story and someone, Mm -hmm. she messaged me and said, you, you're not straight. You just want, (laughs) he looks like a lesbian or something. (laughs) And a lot of people told me that. And you know what? Shut up. That's what I have to say to that. <laughs> but young Mazzino. Dude. I can't talk about the show he was in, obviously, because of the strike. But he is so hot. It's insane. Sis is just like a genius. <sighs> all so the men in the ways. all the men in there were so sexy. I yeah. was super gagged. It's just the way that SZA is just like, she knows how to get the girls talking, bitch. Like... And she's just like unbelievably talented, obviously. Yeah. But like the the art direction and stuff that she chooses and and all of her like very specifically curated music videos, like the the style mm-hmm. and the scenery and everything, the, the background, the when, lighting. When her and Justin Bieber are on that little bulldozer, I wanted to lay my body down behind <laughs> it and have it run over and you. just literally obliterate my body. That was insane. The way he's sitting and looking at her and <gasps> smiling. Yeah, oh he looked a, he looked a little too excited. But I was like, oh but my god, this is just so like gorgeous. Mm. Like she's so fucking beautiful, and she's so fucking talented too. It's too much. Oh, it's crazy. And like her, just like her stylistic choices and stuff is just, it just all works so beautifully. After they run over you in the tractor, um, would you have Young run over you in the quad? On the, on the motorcycle? On the quad, No, yeah. I want Justin Bieber and SZA to run over my body in the bulldozer. <laughs> and then I want Young Mizuno to tie my what's left of my body to the, to back, the back of, of that quad. And they drag me through the mud or whatever they're yeah. doing. And then I want him to step on me. <laughs> I just thought. How the fuck, like, this is just on a whole nother level of hot because, like, every, not that none of the men were, but, like, they obviously, all of them are very good looking men too. But, like, it's just, like, the fact that she just, like, she knew, just, like, elevates, like, you know what I'm saying? Like, they just, like, every single person she looked perfect with. Yeah. That's crazy. That's crazy. I wish I could relate to that. She just looked perfect. I know. Ugh. Even with the little robot at the end. Did you watch the whole video? Yeah, I watched the whole thing. Of course I did. I literally, my first night in my new house, I played it and I had to keep pausing it and screaming. <laughs> Young Ms. You know, is so hot. I don't care. <laughs> I so saw, hot. I saw a really funny TikTok about him. What? About Young Ms. You know, like, uh, it was this kid and he was in the gym mm-hmm. and he goes, when I want to skip my workout, but I saw my fellow <laughs> Korean brother was in a SZA music video and then he's like working out really fast. <laughs> like he like sped it up. <laughs> Uh, I mean, so I've funny. known he's hot because uh, I watched um, the show that he was in, but um, like he was so hot in that show. And then seeing him in that, I was like, ah. it's like seeing, <laughs> you know, what's so funny too. It's like when you see people like that in the shows and you're like, obviously that person is attractive, whatever. Yeah. And then when they get cast in other things like music videos, yeah. it almost feels like, it almost feels like you're seeing them in real life. <laughs> 
<laughs> so then you're like, oh, or what does she say? Mean girls? It's like watching a dog walk on its hind legs. Yeah. yeah like, but it's like, it's, if you, it feels like you're watching them in real life yeah. and then you're like, holy shit, that's crazy. Like That's how I feel about um, Jacob Elordi. I just watched him in a trailer for something else. Mm. And like, I've always thought like in Euphoria, I'm like, oh yeah, he's good looking. Then I saw him in that and I was like, oh my God, hold on, <laughs> hold on. It's too much. <laughs> I just thought that like every coupling in that music video, like she just looked perfect. Like part, they looked so I beautiful. Know. Like what a beautiful couple together. Every single one. I was like a beautiful couple, even the robot, even the robot, like beautiful couples, all of them. God, she's so fucking good. And she's smart. She is smart. And I, I thought the representation was fucking kick ass too. On top of that. It's fucking awesome. Everyone in that video, hot and sexy, hot, sexy, hot, sexy, hot, sexy. sexy. There you go. You guys. So I'm on my Kindle grind. I have finished the, but hopefully by the time you guys watch this, I've finished all three books, but I finished the two, but first two books in the summer, Rich and pretty series. And I have a lot of thoughts. All of you, Connie (laughs) lovers, you're lying to yourselves. You need to be honest. He's mean the whole time. Yeah, I know, bitch. I read them. And so you, you, I'm going to finish the third one. I think I'm about halfway. I'll probably finish it tonight. But I was reading them and I was like, uh-uh. You're reading the third one? I'm on the right side of history, me. And you're reading, are you reading the third one right now? Yeah, I just said I'm halfway through it. I already know it's going to end yep. in a way that makes me want to break my Kindle in half. Told but, you. <laughs> I told you. But I did you're, it. I'm going to hold Jason's Kindle and then she's going to like, oh, yeah. No, I'm going to headbutt my head through it. <laughs> but um, what was I going to say? I have been getting questions on like, what am I reading? So I'm finishing that. I'll probably be done with it tonight. Mm-hmm. And then I'm going to start reading Killers of the Flower Moon. That one's supposed to be really good. Mm-hmm. And I have Akatar. I have the first one. Oh, I have Akatar, but I just, I started reading it and I thought it was boring, but I, I got to give it a fair chance. I sent you a TikTok uh-huh. of a fanfic. Are you going to read it? Wait, you didn't send me a TikTok on that. I did. I sent it to you specifically so you could read it on your Kindle. When did you send it to me? I sent it. Because what happens is I'll send you 50 of them and then I don't see any of the ones you sent me. Friday. Didn't see it. Okay, so don't tell me people, what it's about. I want to read it. No, I have to tell you the summary of it. Like, I don't know it. I haven't read okay. it, but like, basically, I watched someone. I'm on Book Talk hella right now. Even so though I she keep, doesn't know how to read, so I don't know why. <laughs> I keep seeing um, these are books I think were overhyped, and these are books that I think had the proper hype, and these are books that I think need to be mm-hmm. hyped more, kind of thing. I I see like hundreds of those. A lot of people were recommending queer fiction to me, and I have all those books. I just haven't read them. <laughs> Um, Jason sent me a TikTok. This is random, not about the Kindle, literally at all. But I'm happy for you. <laughs> I do want to read more books, though. <laughs> okay. Once I'm done with mine, I'll read more. Oh, when you're done writing your book? Yeah, once I'm done with mine. Well, yeah. I'm always down for fiction. If anyone wants to send me fiction. I literally stopped pretending that I like nonfiction books, and now I like reading. <laughs> that was what unlocked my my third eye. <laughs> I like both, but I, I love a fiction book because it's so fun. Like I get finished, look like at the summer turn pretty, like I've been reading them so fast because, and on there because I'm racing that little percentage. <laughs> I have goals to meet. Like before I got ready for Beyonce, I was like, got to get to 50% before I can finish. It's like closing the rings on your Apple Watch. Yeah, that never motivated me. But the <laughs> the Kindle does something to me. That brain. I don't care about. But uh, No, but the Kindle, I don't know what happens. I'm to always brain. down for fiction. I thought of something else though because I looked over at you and I looked at Remy and that made me think of it. <laughs> But Dason's been sending me, <laughs> Dason's been sending me. We've been getting tagged in them too. Yeah. I actually, after you sent it to me, mm-hmm. I, I had looked and I got tagged in a few, mm-hmm. a different one. Um, but I heard that Remy and Emil have a little chef dance party at Disneyland and none of you bitches were going to tell me that's crazy. You guys are so fake for that. It's in that little playroom. I don't know what you call it. It's like, it's a, it's like a theater. Yeah. yeah. The one across from the wiener. Thing. Yeah, in uh Disney California Adventures. Yep. Yeah, I need to go there. You know, I didn't I know saw, that that's what was going on. I there. saw the TikTok. I said I would like to go there. <laughs> <laughs> I'd like to go there, and I'd like to shake ass with those two rats. Girl, do you guys know the song "Uh <laughs> Big Bang"? <laughs> Big Bang. <laughs> Can you guys play um? <laughs> The way Smack Rem- a bitch. You know what's so funny is like as much as I love Remy, peace and love, love Remy forever. He became an elitist <laughs> as soon as he started French cooking. I told you that Emil is literally squid. 
<laughs> no fucking seriously. Because he eats garbage and he's just there for a good time. He just eats anything. Like if it's if it's small enough, it's going in his mouth. That's why I always I always joke like if he could put furniture in his mouth, he would. Yeah. Like his <laughs> He stresses me the fuck out, dude. I let him come in here one time. I haven't since we started this new studio. Yeah. Because there's a rug in here and I know he wants to like inchworm his body around it. He like gets a, his scent on there. So I let him come in and he, we, him and I were both having fun. I was laughing at him and recording him. And then he ruined it because he bit my toe. That's him wanting to play. I wasn't playing. <laughs> I was observing him play. My fridge makes these little whiskey balls that are like, they're literally just ice spheres and it makes them. And so I use them for like, not whiskey. I'll put them in my Stanley. I'll put them in my coffee. Nice, fresh diet, Dr. Pep, <laughs> you know, in a glass cup. Uh, but Squid's new thing is like, I give him those little whiskey balls because he loves balls now. Um tennis ball balls in his mouth yep he likes that too i'm sure but i give those to him and he like is just the fucking happiest dog like when i give it to him <laughs> he thinks they're toys and he gets to eat them so it's like he's it's like a win-win like he literally he'll carry it around the house and then as it gets smaller and smaller like it's just like he just goes like he plays with the ball himself like that it's so fucking cute but he gets almost too excited because then he gets zoomies right after. So the joke's on me. But his new thing is like when I take him in the backyard, like uh, if he's like feeling like excited, like he wants to play. When I start walking back, he'll literally go somewhere to put something in his mouth. So I have to come get it from him and then he'll spit it out and then he'll take off and he won't come back to me. And he just like he's like crouched like that with his butt really high and he's going ha! and mm-hmm. then he starts sprinting around and I can't grab him. So then I'm just, cause he's too fast. So then I'm like, all right, I just go bye, bye. And I start walking away. And then he always chases me because he doesn't want to, he doesn't want me to like leave without him. <laughs> cause he has FOMO. Dude, when Alex and Steven were here, uh, we had a pool day. So we like, we went swimming and me and Alex were out there and I have to put a life jacket on squid because he loves water, but he will sink to the bottom like a stone. So I put his little life jacket on and he's like a little hesitant, but he's fun. He's, he's fine. Cause he loves to play in the water, but like he gets nervous around the, like if I put him in the pool, he'll swim, but he doesn't love it yet. So I just put him on the little step, right? So he can like hang out. And then I let him out cause he wanted to get out. And so he like ran outside of the pool area and then he got zoomies when he got out there. Cause now he's like, he's wet, which is fun for him. And then he started sprinting. He was going a million miles an hour, like in that life jacket, <laughs> like he was running so fucking fast. And he was like, his butt was wagging because he has no tail. So his butt was wagging super <laughs> hard. And Alex was dying because I kept trying to catch him. But like, I can't because he's so low to the ground and he's now he's wet. So he's slippery. So then I'm like trying to grab his life jacket. I'm like, you're lucky I have nails. Otherwise, I would have got you a, an hour ago. And so I'm literally like, and when he turns, he like, he jumps his butt to the side and then takes off again. And it literally felt like I was hog wrestling. Like I was chasing a greased up pig because he was so slippery. And then I had to do the same. I was like, this always works. And I just stood up and I was like, bye, bye. (laughs) And I walked to the door and then he sprinted to the door and then we cornered him and then I picked him up. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break, and this is with our friends at Tushy. So taking a dump shouldn't cost you money. End your relationship with costly toilet paper. With over 100,000 five-star reviews, see why millions of real pooping humans already love the Hello Tushy bidet. Every Hello Tushy bidet attachment comes with a 30-day risk-free guarantee and a 12-month warranty. So I personally, Jason, I have been using my Tushy bidet. I actually own two of them, and guess what? I'm obsessed with them. It's just... You feel so much cleaner when you use it, I'm going to be honest with you, than rather when I use toilet paper, if that makes sense. And it doesn't matter how many times a day I use it, it feels you know, perfectly fine. After each time, I feel very clean. So the reason that I like it is because it helps my butt feel cleaner and fresher than toilet paper alone. And you should get yourself a tushy too, because no one likes a dirty beehole. I know that's right. So the Hello Tushy Bidet cleans your bum with a fresh stream of water that's two times better than wiping and prevents poo particles from spreading to your hands and everything you touch. It attaches to your existing toilet, requires no electricity or additional plumbing, and cuts toilet paper use by 80%. A Hello Tushy Bidet pays for itself 
yourself in under a year. Stop wiping and start washing. Go to hellotushy.com forward slash two idiot girls and use promo code two idiot girls for 10% off your first order. That's hellotushy.com slash two idiot girls for 10% off. Now back to the episode. Nice. Because otherwise he he thinks like everyone's having fun. Everyone's playing. Uh, and then he'll run for an hour. Because <laughs> we're fun. Fun. Dude. Everyone's mad. <laughs> it made Alex laugh. She was laughing so hard. She was no help to me whatsoever. <laughs> Trying to catch him. <laughs> and uh, neither was I, if I'm being honest. Because I was like, if you break my nail, I'm going to get mad. Yeah. <laughs> <So> immediately. <laughs> I'm not having fun anymore. Yeah. I love him so much, but he's so weird. I know in, the, in my new house, the cats not only have zoomies like around me, yeah. but now if I'm like downstairs watching TV, they'll sprint upstairs and I can hear them running around my room above me, <laughs> come back down the stairs across me, uh, like underneath the chair. It's awful. We have lots of room now. So I'm to just play. like, stop. And then they stop. It's too much. It's too loud. No one wants to listen to that. Yeah. Squid zoomies are so like, he breathes like a fucking gremlin. So, cause he's like, ah, 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 when he's like doing that. And then if you're not like interacting with him, he'll literally go like, ah, like he'll like nip your clothes or mm-hmm. something. He's, he's a puppy. He's playing no advice needed. He's just having fun. Um, but now I have to slow him down cause he'll get like tired for running for two minutes cause he's a little hog and then he'll go drink too much water and then he'll throw up that water and then he'll try to eat that. So, <laughs> so I have to slow him down. Quick little squid update. So, yeah, a quick little squid update. He's loving life <laughs> and living lavish. That's what he's oh, doing. Shit. <laughs> okay, so we're doing a part two to funny back to school stories since we didn't get to read that many in the last episode. Yes. Um, a lot of them, because I perused through them, and even the ones we did last time, a lot of them have to do with farting, right? which is so funny. And it reminded me of one time in high school, my freshman year, I made the varsity team and I was so nervous because all the girls were older than me. And one time we had an away game, it was like a preseason one and I didn't want to go. Well, actually I didn't want to go because I didn't want to play anymore, but um, I wanted to like skip school that day because the Jonas brothers were doing a meet and greet for their book at Disneyland. I remember that. And so I told my coach, Hey, like I'm going to miss school the day of the game, but I'll meet you guys at the game. Cause we would take the bus obviously from school. And she was like, Oh, it's against like the rules to not go to school that like you, if you miss class, you have, you can't play in the game. Yeah. And I was so upset. So we didn't get to meet the Jonas brothers then, but then we did get to meet them. I don't know, like 15 years later. <laughs> but anyways, um, I went to the game. I was so nervous. I think it was like my first game. Um, with them and we were warming up and I remember we were doing this drill where there was like two people on each side of the goal and then two facing us because I put goalie Mm -hmm. and so I dove for the ball in front of one of the girls and I farted so loud dude and then I literally stood up and just acted like I didn't do that and then like because I was so nervous I like was like if I draw attention to it if I'm like if I like look then everyone's gonna know it was me and then one of them brought it up to me later and I was like I literally didn't fart but okay and then she was so embarrassed I was like, is that why you guys always laugh at me? And she was like, oh, no. And then I was like, me. I was like, <laughs> into feeling guilty. <laughs> but I know that I is what they think, laugh about me for. And I wasn't going to own up to it. I just think, like, if I heard it and you're not my friend, mm-hmm. like, I'm not like, like, if you farted in front of me, I'd be like, dude, are you fucking for real? <laughs> yeah. Like, <laughs> go do that shit somewhere else. I'm like, trying to think of something. Like- I just get mad at you. Like, I wouldn't even, like. <laughs> I wouldn't like embarrass you. I would yeah. just get mad at you. <laughs> like if Brandon bent down to tie your shoe, like you're trying on an outfit and he farted, what would you do? <laughs> what would you do? I would ignore it. That's my point. Like it's too. just, it's kind of <laughs> like falling. Like it's like, do you want me to acknowledge it? No. Yeah. So like, I'm down to pretend like <laughs> we can pretend. What I hate is when they're like, sorry about that. Like, then you put put me in a weird spot. Brandon has never done that. That's my stylist. He has never done that to me. He's so sweet, too. He he has never done that to me. He would never do that. Like, I was going to say, why did you, you should have used Adam, but honestly, if Adam did it, we would laugh about it. Like, I would make fun of him because we're that close. You know what I'm saying? Like, um, but like, (laughs) I would ignore it. Like, I would just pretend. Cause like, I don't want to talk about it just as much as you do. So like, 
I'm super cool with pretending. Yeah, like, I feel that. and like you, like, that's what I'm saying. Like her bringing it up to you. Like, what do you gain out of that? Yeah. Like, you just want confirmation. You heard it, bitch. Right. You it's have, mean. you have the knowledge and the sense about you to know that it was me. And if I say it wasn't me, who are you to tell me I'm wrong? I agree. Yeah. Right. So like, just don't bring it up at all. Like I'm down to pretend I'd laugh about it, but privately, mm-hmm. I wouldn't kiki with like others teammates. Like I would go home and tell my family. Mm-hmm. Like that's mean. like one of those things where I tell you, like I won't tell anyone. Uh, when I say that there's an asterisk next to it, which means I will tell my family and my boyfriend, <laughs> but outside of that, that's yeah. It. No one, <laughs> no one's hearing no peep out of me. <laughs> I'm kidding. Relax. Okay. I'm kidding. Okay. So this first one's from Haley. She mm-hmm. said, I downloaded my sixth grade class books to my family's iPad instead of just borrowing a copy to feel like that bitch. I never charged it. And I always ended up having to use the school's hard copies anyways. <laughs> Cause you were in sixth grade. So you don't need an iPad. <laughs> you don't need an iPad. Oh, damn. With sixth grade, how old are you? You had an iPad in sixth grade? Well, it was the family one. So still though, iPads were around. They were not around when I was in sixth grade. Well, yeah, clearly. <laughs> Cause we're old. Cause I'm a hundred years old. That's so funny. I remember a text, remember those little, like, uh, those little socks you had to put on your textbooks? Yeah, the book covers. Book covers, yeah. yeah. So, like, and you try to get, like, cute ones that, like, match your personality. And I hated when the book would be too big, so it would be stretched out and thin. <laughs> <laughs> Just, like, stretched to hell. And you can, like, see through it. And, like, it. the corners are still hanging out. Like, the corners on the spine, on the spine are hanging out because they're too small. I hated that. I thought that was ridiculous. I, I'm borrowing a textbook because... It, the school is, you know, offering it to me and then I have to do my duty to protect it. <laughs> yeah. That seems ridiculous. Yeah. Well, That's, especially when I only had to get book covers and shit in middle school. Yeah. But I'm just saying like, and so, like I'm 12 years old. Dude, I told <laughs> Steven and Alex about my middle school. Dude, Alex told me the funniest fucking stories. <laughs> like she said, <laughs> she said, did you know she played saxophone? I don't think I've ever talked to her. Which one though? And Alto. Oh, okay. Yeah. Actually, I think we have talked about that. Yeah. She, I'm I not going like, to lie. I think playing the saxophone is equivalent to being a lesbian. <laughs> like lesbians don't pick the flute. You know what? Some of them might pick the clarinet. I picked the flute. Yeah. They might pick the clarinet. Clarinet seems kind of gay to me. Um, I think brass is, is where you're, you're right. Are with you brass. kidding? If a girl picks trumpet. That's what I'm saying. She's gay. No, I know. I'm agreeing with you. Yeah. But I, the trumpet is way more gay. Maybe saxophone's like bi, but, um, yeah. yeah. Trumpet is for sure a lesbian. <laughs> Same with trombone. Yeah. Come on. Bra- anything brass. Anything brass. Yeah. Drums hit or miss, but yeah, for sure the trumpet. Yeah. 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 Woodwinds. Woodwinds is me. Yeah. Like flute, clarinet. Don't come for me. I'm not a band expert. Piccolo. <laughs> no, she, she told me she played the saxophone and she said she like <laughs> me just telling Alex's stories. She told me that she... <laughs> Tried to, she like convinced, tried to convince her mom, like, just buy it. Cause I'm going to play saxophone for the rest of my life. Like, I think she, she did tell me this. Okay. She's like, I'm just, I'm literally going to play forever. Like I haven't even started, but I'm going to be an expert. And then her mom was like, okay, how about you stick with it for a year? And then if you really want to, we could talk about buying an extra. She's like, okay. She's like, I did it for like three or four months. And she goes, and then I realized that everybody um, started bullying me because I was a nerd in the band. So then I quit. <laughs> I know I played the <laughs> I was like, really? She goes, yeah, like there was one girl that bullied me a lot. <laughs> she was like, but like, and it was just so sad. It was like the way she told me, she was like, and then I found out like popular girls don't do this. And then I just quit. <laughs> <laughs> well, it turns out your mom was right. <laughs> She knew you were going to go in yeah. anyways. I played the saxophone from, I think, fourth to sixth grade. Mm-hmm. And I was so nervous for sixth grade because it was a new teacher. That teacher was so mean. He yeah. made me hate the saxophone. Oh, I remember that. He would make me cry every day. He was band. known for being really mean. He was so, so. mean. I'm yeah. like, how do you work at a middle school and you fucking hate kids? <laughs> yeah. And you're the band teacher. That was my eighth grade math teacher she but hated we would play too. on on like holidays we would play this game where he put us in teams and he would play like the first five seconds of a song and you had to write it down then it was so fun and i was always winning but it was really really fun but yeah he did make that's me true they did quit the band after sixth grade after that class because he was mean to me and that was my fault for wanting to be an advanced band i should have just stayed in intro band oh, when you're so talented rip i know i was the only sixth grader in there everyone was in eighth grade Oh my gosh. In that class, this girl, like, you know, Drew's told stories about how, like, 
people would ask me if they could copy my homework and then I would lie and say that I didn't have it. Mm. So I remember I was sitting with my friend and we were talking about how, you know, you would take, you know, you would take your PE clothes home on Friday and you would wash, wash them, them and yeah. you would bring them back on Monday. I did it every Friday, like clockwork. Dude. One time, you know, straight. Yeah. <laughs> one time, um, my friend and I were talking about how we wash our PE clothes and she was saying like, yeah, I can't believe some girls don't. And I was like, I know, I think it's, you know, I think that's gross. And then, this girl that was sitting in front of me, mm. she turns around and she goes, oh, you washed your PE clothes to me? And I go, yeah. And she goes, is there any way I could borrow yours? I have PE in second period and we were in first period and I didn't have it till I think six or seven. And mind you, she had hers. She just didn't wash them. Yeah. No, she forgot them at home. Like she oh. took them home to wash them and she forgot them at home. Oh, and okay. you would get like detention if you didn't have like your PE clothes. Yeah, that's true. And so I was like, um, when she was asking me. <laughs> And so then I went, um, yeah, that's fine. This story is so Dason coded. And it's then I let her crazy. borrow them. And then she gave them back to me like at lunch and they were sweaty and I was annoyed. And then I put them on and they didn't feel good. <laughs> but yeah, then I wore them and they were sweaty and I felt like itchy all day like i just felt gross and it's honest it's probably like a placebo where i like made myself think that because i was wearing someone else's sweat clothes i doubt it i doubt it was a placebo well then i had to take them home and wash them again and, and then my, my mom, my was, mom like, was like why, why are you yeah. washing them again i just washed those for you and then daisy was like well this girl at school that she didn't know by the way like this girl was not her friend it wasn't me no it was like it a, was a class a literal random person yeah. who just was over like eavesdropping on her conversation mm -hmm. <laughs> and she like was like and she said she didn't have her so i just let her use mine my mom goes you you wore the same you let her use your clothes her clothes and you she fucking ran around in them sweat in them and then she gave them back to you and the basin was like yeah and then my mom was like don't ever do that again <laughs> that's also so so unsanitary like it's like like genuinely like that's really bad like <laughs> you, she should not it's one thing to copy homework <laughs> but to be like can i borrow your shorts just run around in them for a little bit <laughs> do you mind if i exercise in your shorts and our pe shirts were so thick because they were double-sided <laughs> yeah dude our pe shirts were literally like <laughs> They felt like the, you know, the, those fucking things they put on you at the dentist when they give you x-rays. So it'll give you like fucking cancer, radiation poisoning. You know what I'm saying? That's what they felt like. They felt like a fucking weight vest. So you sweat, like if you already sweat, like you're going to sweat 10 times more in that fucking wool coat that they had us wear. Cause they would, they were reversible. So like once I was black, once I was yellow. And then like, sometimes they'd be like, wear yellow or wear black. Girls were yellow, boys were, yeah. Yeah, and so then you'd have to like reverse them and wear it. It literally felt like those weight vests they put on you at the fucking dentist, like to protect you. Like it was literally two shirts sewed it together. It wasn't like a shirt with a pattern on the inside. No, it literally was thick as yeah. hell. So, and then the shorts were so cheap and thin. Yeah, and they were those ones that like were super tight on your butt and your, and then they would flare a little bit on your legs like that. Dogs, awful, fucking horrible. All right, friends, we're going to take another break, and this is with our friends at Lumi. So Booty B.O. sounds funny. Having it, not so much. That's why I'm so excited to tell you about Lumi, the world's best whole body deodorant. It's clinically proven to control body odor everywhere, pits, privates, and beyond for a whopping 72 hours. As an OBGYN, Lumi's founder, Dr. Shannon Klingman, met thousands of women concerned with odor below the belt. Through clinical testing, she discovered it wasn't the vagina to blame, but bacteria on the skin. So she created Lumi, a pH-optimized aluminum free deodorant that actually works and works everywhere with over 150,000 five-star reviews to prove it. Special offer, new customers get $5 off Lumi starter pack with code 2idiotgirls at lumideodorant.com. So I personally, I've been using Lumi starter pack, my favorite thing in the starter pack besides, honestly, I really like all of them. My favorite one out of all of them is the deodorant rings because you could take them on your, on your way to the gym and then on your way home, you can use them and just wipe down your pits. Like if you're going to go eat after the gym, which is my favorite thing to do after I work out, then you can use that just to feel a little bit fresher before you go into a public place, especially if you're as sweaty as I am. 
Lumi Starter Pack is perfect for new customers. It comes with a solid stick deodorant, cream tube deodorant, two free products of your choice, like the mini body wash and deodorant wipes, and free shipping. As a special offer for listeners, new customers get $5 off the Lumi Starter Pack with code 2idiotgirls at lumideodorant.com. That equates to over 40% off your starter pack when you visit lumideodorant.com and use code 2idiotgirls. Now back to the episode. And your name was written on them. You had to write your name so that your teacher could see you, <laughs> identify you. Were, yeah. <laughs> they could ID you. Dude. <laughs> <laughs> okay, this, this next one's from Nikki. She said, one time I was walking to class with my ex at the time, and she was telling me a story. In the middle of her story, I started choking on my gum, and she proceeded to continue telling her story while I was gagging. And then when she finally finished, she asked if I was okay. Needless to say, we didn't work out. Oh, <laughs> that like, reminds me of um, Cassidy Condi. Dude, video. I know. I I'm not kidding. I thought of the same fucking. If thing. you guys don't follow Cassidy on TikTok, she's really funny. Cassidy Condi. Yeah, but she posted a video talking about uh, <laughs> how she has like distinct memories attached to Certified Lover Boy, the Drake album. And she said she went to a date on a date at a steakhouse with this guy. Yeah. And she said she was trying to be cute and like only. She's like, you know, usually when you eat steak, you have to chew it like fifty times. And she's like, you're chewing and you're like. Mm. Yeah. So she said, so this time I was like, I'm only going to choose it, chew it like five times. Like, and she said she swallowed it and it got stuck. And she said it was like a big (laughs) chunk, like in her throat. And she said she was going like this. She was trying to first clear her throat. She was was trying to do it like (laughs) cute at first. And then it like, she literally was like, I'm literally choking. So she stood up and and the, the waiter slapped her back. She stood up and was like telling, like pointing, and he was still talking. Like he was like, "What are you doing?" Like he didn't understand. <laughs> and then a waiter came and slapped her back really hard, and, and she, she just coughed it out. It out. <laughs> She's all. So, anyways, that's what that reminds me. Of. <laughs> <laughs> oh, she was really fucking. It funny. was really funny. <laughs> like choking is not funny, but that story is funny. Yeah. Um, I Jerry used to choke on literally everything all the time. I think we've talked about this before. You know who was like that too? Um, Donnie. Yeah, but he his would be like mine was like little things. His yeah. would be like too much food, too much food at once when he was like a ba- a baby. Yeah, but like mine was like well into childhood, like when I was like eight, nine, ten, yeah. kind of thing. Um, but it's just anything small, like a peppermint. A can, a hard candy of any kind, Jolly Rancher. Like she could not, like she was not allowed to eat sunflower seeds. So I would yeah. have to bite them open and give them to her. I just like don't, I don't know why. <laughs> like I just always choked on that shit. Like so much so that my mom literally banned me from eating them anymore. <laughs> she was too afraid that I was going to choke. And like I remember one time my sister and I were like, we were looking at something like we were both laying on our stomachs and we were looking at like a book or something like a coloring book. No, I was playing with my light bright. Yeah. But we were laying together like Mm -hmm. on the ground in the living room. And I remember we had this, uh, fancy like vase vase and it had candies in it and it was like a decorative one. And I remember my dad was watching as my mom was in college at the time. So she was like taking some courses and she was there And my dad was like, uh, Hey, you guys stay here. I'm going to go do something really quick. And I I forget where he went. He, he went to go like work on something or like go get something. And we're older. Like, I think I was like eight, like maybe I honestly, I might've been eight and you were six. I think that no, we were like children though. I'm saying it's like, I wasn't like a toddler is my point. Like, so my dad walked into the other room for like maybe five minutes and like I went, to get a candy. I like literally had to climb on something to get it. Cause mm-hmm. it was re- my dad literally put it high up so I couldn't get it. <laughs> so I like found a way to get up there and I got it and I went to unwrap the candies. And I remember they were like orange and yellow, yeah. like little green, sweet, yeah. green, like little hard candies. And then Daisy goes, you're not supposed to eat those. Cause <laughs> I was banned from eating hard candies. And I was like, it's literally fine. But I did it because he was gone. Obviously I ate it. Two seconds later, I started choking. <laughs> and then Daisy was like, Daddy, help. Like, he's, she's choking again. <laughs> and then, like, I was choking and I threw up in front of Daisy because <laughs> it was stuck right there. And my dad literally picked me up and ran me to the bathroom. And I'm throwing up, like, into the sink. 
And my dad is like sticking his fingers all the way down my throat and like trying to, cause he tried hitting me, he tried Heimlicking and it wouldn't get out. So my dad literally stuck his hand in my throat <laughs> and fucking took it out, like ripped it out. Cause he was so scared. <laughs> like, my eyes are all red water, <laughs> watering. <laughs> my hair's all fucked up. <laughs> cause I was literally choking on that fucking candy. And that whole saga happened in like, 30 seconds like that's how long it took me to choke throw up and then my dad to rip it out of my mouth <laughs> and, then, and then Jason was afraid of me for, for the rest of the day because she's a metaphobic <laughs> and when we went to go get pick up my mom from school my dad was like why the fuck like my dad was like why did you eat that I told you you're not allowed to have those and I was like I'm sorry <laughs> like my eyes are all red <laughs> and I was like you're all sweaty yeah. yeah and I was like <sighs> and then I literally told my dad, can I go back and play now? And my dad was like, sure. Cause my dad had to clean up my fucking vomit <laughs> everywhere. And then, <laughs> and then we went to go pick my mom up from school. And when we were driving in the car, we had three rows in our car. And my sister made me sit all the way in the back by myself. Cause she was so afraid of me. <laughs> and she was like, you sit back there. And I was like, I wasn't sick. I literally choked. Like, I'm, like, annoyed at her. She's like, come on. I was like, I literally choked, Jason. Like, it was just choking. It's fine. <laughs> and she was like, no. And she just refused to look at me or talk to me the rest of the day. And then my mom was really mad at me when she, when she picked, my dad picked her up. Which is so, like, dude, that, it's like, that's like a summary of having children. It's crazy. Yeah. <laughs> it's just fucking crazy. Okay, this next one's from Jamie. She said, I once sneezed so hard one time in an all-girl health class that I farted and almost shit my pants. The teacher literally stopped the lesson to just stare at me. Well, that's fucked up. <laughs> to put you on the spot like that? <laughs> she's like, it's almost like she stops and she's like, I want you to think about what you just did. Like, why are you like that? <laughs> why do you act like that? <laughs> like what? Dude. And you were in all women's health class? Is that like the same thing when they would like take you out to show you the video about periods? Probably. Do you think? Yeah. And like why you shouldn't share razors and whatever. Yeah. Like all the different things that you need to like be mindful of when you have a vagina. That's crazy. Also to put you on the spot like that, she's like, I'm going to let you sit in that for a little <laughs> bit. And now go stand in the corner and think about what you did. <laughs> Shut up. Who knows the reference? <laughs> I know it. Let me know in the comments below. <laughs> Let us know down below. Okay, this next <laughs> one's from Sierra. She said, all through middle school, I strictly wore my hair in a high ponytail. If it wasn't tight enough, I would get so mad at my mom. <laughs> and one of those tiny, thin Under Armour headbands every day. I probably had 200 of those stringy headbands. My hairline has never been the same. Damn, bitch. That's crazy. <laughs> Damn, bitch. <laughs> I did a slick back pony probably in like fifth grade. I think that was like the whole time I did that. But in sixth grade, I didn't do it anymore. Yeah, I remember when um we were in, I think we were in elementary school. Like it was like when my mom started uh working, like moving up the uh, corporate ladder kind of thing. And my dad, my dad was working too, but my mom's schedule, she started a lot earlier. So my dad would take us to school. And I remember he would always like, make us shower in the morning, mm -hmm. um, get dressed. And then he would do our hair and like, make sure we eat breakfast and like have lunch and everything. Like my dad was like taking care of the home stuff when my mom would go to work earlier than him. Oh, I think that was when he was working like night shifts and stuff. Mm -hmm. That's why. Um, so he would like take us to school and then my mom would pick us up and stuff. And I remember I hated when my dad would do my hair because my dad used to slick all my hair back, like no part, no, no barrettes, no cute hair ties, nothing like, and I loved like a glam look, bitch. Even though I would come home and look like I got hit by a bus, I always wanted to look really cute when I went to school. And yeah. like, Jason was like, I don't care because I hate that I'm going to school. <laughs> like, she didn't give a fuck. And I remember I would cry and I would tell my dad, please do something different with my hair. But my dad would be like, I don't know how to do anything and we have to hurry. <laughs> like, my dad was like, just hurry, just help me. And also that was my fault too, because Dason would always get up when my dad woke us up. She would get out of bed. She would go downstairs. She would go, she would like brush her teeth, do all her stuff, go downstairs, go eat her breakfast. And I'd still be sleeping. 
And then he would come in the room. He'd be like, Drew, get up, get up. And then he would wake me, turn all the lights on. Then he would literally have to pull me out of bed. And then I was pissed off that he didn't have enough time to do my, <laughs> my very intricate hairstyles. That's the same with Donnie. Like my dad would literally bag up my breakfast because I was like never downstairs on time to eat it. <laughs> Cause I was too busy fucking sleeping. <laughs> never ready to go. And then never ready to leave school. <laughs> and then pissed off that nobody wants to take their time getting my head, my hair ready. And I remember my, I, when my mom would come home. I'd be like, he's killing me. He's literally killing me. He makes me look so ugly when I go to school. <laughs> and like, it's funny. Cause I couldn't wear my hair down. Cause I would get too sweaty at school. And my hair was so long that I would get too tangled. So like I couldn't wear my hair down. My dad was like, you can't wear it down. So he would just, um, when I bitch, like literally slicked all the way back. Like I was a fucking greaser girl. Like I looked like John Travolta. <laughs> I was going to say you're like in the army. Yeah, <laughs> the the way they made me look like Kaniki before I went to fucking school. <laughs> <laughs> so fucked up. <laughs> and then I would beg my mom. I'm like, please teach him how to do my hair, please. And so I remember my mom taught my dad how to at least do a part. Right. Like mm-hmm. a side part or something, which I was okay with then. And then he would braid it sometimes, but most of the time it was just fucking like West Side Story. I was a fucking shark. A low pony. Yeah. Yeah. In a low pony, yeah. bitch. At least yours were, yours was high. As I said, I was like serving Will Turner core. Yeah. Ugh. <laughs> so bad. Anyways, I don't remember what the submission said. That her mama put her hair up in a high pony. Oh, yeah. That's right. That's right. High slicked back pony with the little thin Under Armour bands. I remember those. I remember those. That's cute. I never... I don't know if I ever... Well, I have a widow's peak, so maybe that's why. For those headbands? No, I'm saying when we would do the slick back ponies, I'm like, I don't know if that... Because I know sometimes it does yank on your hairline if yeah. you do them every day. But I guess we didn't do it every single day. We did it every single day and it was that tight and hairsprayed. That's crazy. I could never wear those under armor headbands because they would hurt my head because my head's too big. Same. Or they'd like just slip off because my head's too big. Same. So, but I liked pre-wrap. That was cute. Oh yeah. Well, pre-wrap I always wore when I played soccer, but I didn't wear it to school really. Yeah, me either. Unless I was like trying to do a sporty look. All right, friends, we're going to take a quick little break. And this is with our friends at Julie. So I personally, I do not have experience with the morning after pill, but I have had friends who have experience with that. And I know for them, that experience for them made them feel shameful, a little bit embarrassed and just worried. And I don't know, everyone knows how that can feel. So if you've ever had unprotected sex, forgot your birth control, had a condom broke, or you're just unsure, we're excited to talk about a new company that is giving emergency contraception a much needed rebrand. Julie is an FDA approved morning after pill that helps stop a pregnancy before it starts. Julie is aiming to be the emergency contraception company for the next generation, one of learning and acceptance, love, not stigma and shame. When it comes to complex and stressful choices around your health, they believe women deserve products that are easy in every way. Easy to find, easy to take, easy to relate to, and easy to understand. Julie stops your body from releasing an egg using the same active ingredients as Plan B or other morning after pills. Essentially, Julie works by preventing or delaying your ovulation. With no egg, there's no fertilization and therefore no pregnancy. And it's no risk to future fertility. It works best when taken right away or within 72 hours of unprotected sex. And and Julie just launched a CVS, but you can also find Julie at Target and Walmart stores across the U.S. You can also order online for the future just in case. It's legal in all 50 states. You do not need an ID, prescription, or credit card to get it. Right now, Julie is offering our listeners $10 off your online purchase. Go to juliecare.co slash 2 girls to get $10 off your online purchase for a limited time. That's juliecare.co slash 2 girls. Or if you need it right away, you can find Julie at your nearest CVS, Target, or Walmart walmart today now back to the episode oh yeah remember i remember in high school we would say like oh i think i don't think i'm gonna dress up today and then i would like intentionally try to look like i like just just woke up Mm -hmm. but like in a cute way do you remember that such pick me shit bro. that's such pick me shit that's such (laughs) big oh my god that makes me want to kill myself that makes me want to go so bad that makes me want to like Use pim particles to go back and punch myself in the fucking head. <laughs> <laughs> That's crazy, dude. Yeah, like I would, I would like intentionally, I would like wear like, um, basketball shorts and like a, a big t shirt and like socks and sandals, like shit that I wouldn't even wear if I was going to bed. You know what I'm saying? And like, then your hair's in a messy bun. Yeah. And I would try to do a mess. Oh, 
It's so that's so humiliating. Pick, humiliating. That's so pick me. That makes me like my skin itch. Ugh, that's so gross. <laughs> I hate that. <laughs> and you're like, ugh, I just like, I just wasn't feeling like getting dressed up today. <laughs> Even though I, I, we would coordinate that. Like we would, I would like text my friends and be and like, Hey, them, dress down tomorrow. Yeah. That's what I'm doing. <laughs> the way I would literally <laughs> schedule it. And then I'm like, Oh, I just didn't have time. <laughs> that's so cringe. Oh, that's so cringe. Uh, like anyone cared. <laughs> yeah. Like anyone was like, like I was like getting my outfits were getting clocked. When yeah. I was just, like nobody gives a fuck. Oh my God. That's so ugly. I hate that. I like my heart is like kind of racing right now because I'm thinking about how cringe that is. The thought thought of like making that as an active (laughs) choice is so cringe to me. I know a school story that everyone really wants you to tell is the computer lab story. I can't tell you guys that story. Not even on the Patreon, you guys. I'm like, I'm not kidding. Like, (laughs) it's funny when I tell it. But when you think of it, it's but not when funny. you really factor in the context, it's not funny. Like in and and by that I mean like we're all minors and it's like something like that is happening that shouldn't have been happening when we were that age. Especially at school. Especially at school. So like that story is horrifying. It's not funny. It's just like horrifying. Mm-hmm. The funny part about it is like like the only funny part about that is literally me like being like so unaware of certain things that existed in the world that I was like, just so confused. Like I was just like, I don't understand because my worldview was so small and shallow because I was a child. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. So like uh, my, (laughs) my knowledge of the world and relationships and all of that shit was like literally like this, it was a fucking pinhole bitch. Like it was so, so shallow and narrow. So like in the sense that I just didn't know anything and I didn't know any better. I never thought about stuff. So like, I never thought about stuff that is factored into that story. So I can't tell you that story because it's inappropriate. Yeah. Like, it's not because I just like for like protection reasons, which like that is kind of part of it, but it's more so just like, it's inappropriate. It's just horrifying. And it did, it did alter my brain chemistry. So I guess it's kind of traumatizing too. <laughs> it is trauma, yeah. But it's like the funny part is is what I was telling myself happened because I was such a a child, like I was such a baby. You know what I'm saying? Mm-hmm. I'm like, in oh, how old was I in that grade when that happened? I was in eighth grade, so it was like you're like twelve, thirteen, twelve, yeah, like twelve. Yeah, I was twelve. Yeah, I was literally twelve when it happened. So like, I didn't know anything about anything. So. Honestly, when I tell people, like, not talking about the computer lab story, but when I tell people about my middle school in general, people, like, think that it's not real. Mm -hmm. Or that we're making it up. Yeah, because it's so outrageous. And I don't mean, like, not all the stories are, like, the computer lab story, but it's more so just that um, my school was so weird in a lot of ways. Like, we did the the strangest things. Like, I was telling uh, Alex and Steven, I was telling them about how you know, the units thing that we did in PE, like we would pick a sport every semester or whatever to like play a new sport, um, which is normal, Mm -hmm. but we just had weird sports. Like one of them was like circus, which is like juggling and riding a unicycle, which Billy to this day still thinks I made up. It was juggling, riding a unicycle. It was that thing, the the two sticks with the string. That's right. Yeah. That, that you would throw up in the air. Is it like devil sticks or, or no, no, that's a different thing where it's the two sticks and you hit the thing. Yeah. And yeah. then you can like flip it. I learned how to do that one. I forget what this one was called. And you would hit the the side of the string. So it would spin the little cup yes, thing. Yes. And you yes. throw it in the air and catch it. So you got to master juggle. I, I literally told them also, there was a third thing. I just can't remember. You had to master was. all three of those. And then you would be, cause we only had one unicycle and then you would be allowed to try the unicycle. <laughs> and I got to try it and I passed. <laughs> yeah, yeah. It was fun. Like that was one we did archery. Mm-hmm. Um, like, and I mean, like they would give you a bow and arrow and they would give us targets and we would just shoot them. Like we would practice. But they, there were a lot of safety things that we had. Um, was there? Cause I feel like, there I mean, wasn't. in the sense where he, um, my teacher would tell us all, like, you're not allowed to go grab your arrow. Like when everyone, like, yeah, but we're sick. again, like we're children, like they should not have given us <laughs> weapons. Like they were real bows and arrows. Yeah. I'm not kidding. Like they were sharp as fuck. And like, there's one teacher watching 30 kids and all of them are shooting arrows. That's crazy. And some of them are 10. That's fucking (laughs) insane. 
And so like we did that. Rock we had climbing. Rock climbing. I took a Tybo one. That one was really fun. That's right. We'd watch and Billy Blinks videos. <laughs> that's right. And also like when you hear that, you think, oh, it was probably like a really fancy, like rich school. Wrong. Like we were in a low percentage, like poverty stricken school. Like uh, everyone that went to our school was below the poverty line. Like that's where we went to school. How they had all of those things. I genuinely I don't, don't know. know. Yeah. I don't fucking know. I wouldn't be surprised if like they were just like sourcing every goodwill they could find or every like, <laughs> like gym, like that had stuff and they're giving it away and they're mm -hmm. like, I'll take it. And then they were just get, cause some of the shit didn't match. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it was just like, that's just insane. To we me. had lacrosse, field hockey. Like they're all sports. Yep. Like the, I didn't grow up playing because I ever I'm not white and I didn't grow up in a white area. Yeah. So it was like, kind of crazy that they had access to all of those. And it's funny too, because they would say like only like when you would have units like circus, for example, only a certain amount, like they could only take so many because they didn't have enough for everyone. So like if everyone wanted to join that, you couldn't. Yeah. So eighth so, graders would get to pick first. Yeah. So. Eighth graders, seventh, then six. And then they would cut it off once you hit, like you could only have like 10 people in that unit and that's it. And then archery, you could only have 20 people and that's it. Mm -hmm. And then, but they would have a, a bunch of sports so everyone could pick something. Um, so it's just like so strange. I had medieval like Renaissance fair. We had that in seventh grade. But I think our school was just extremely resourceful. Like, I think that's why we had stuff like that. I don't know, but it was fun. Fuck if I know. But I every time I fun. talk about it, it's people say it sounds fake. Because <laughs> it does. Or it sounds like we went to a private school, which we didn't. Yeah. Um, it was a very low income school because we were low income too. So that's why I was like, it's very, it's very weird to think about, huh? I agree. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So it's like shit like that I think about and I'm like, that's crazy. I should not have been doing that when I was 11 years old. No, shooting a bow and arrow. I know. It's like, Billy's like, it's like you guys are training like for the Hunger Games yeah. or something. That's literally what That's it's all. That's how it felt. You know, like in the Hunger Games, they pick people from lower, poorer districts and <laughs> just for entertainment. That's what it fucking felt like. Literally. <laughs> this is the last one. This one's anonymous. So she said, for my senior prom, we all slept in tents after the after party in this girl's backyard around 5 a.m. That's crazy. Around 5 a.m., I woke up with the worst stomach pain I'd ever experienced. I was on my period. Since everyone was still asleep and I didn't know the girl well enough to poop inside her house, I took a massive shit next to her barn. When everyone got up around 8.30, I heard the girl whose, whose house it was saying she was going to look at the cameras in the backyard and around the barn because someone had stolen something from inside. It was never confirmed that she knew what I did, but let's just say I've never been invited back since. First, hold on. There's a lot to unpack in that. Have you seen, you know, like girls will say like when they poop at their boyfriend's houses, they'll put the poop in a bag and then put it in their purse. N no, I haven't. <laughs> what the fuck are you talking about? People have done that. I've, I've heard episodes of two hot takes where they do that. Why? I don't know. The Here's a thought. It still smells like poop in the house. So like you've already done it. Maybe it's like when the plumbing is back, like they don't know that the, okay, that's the toilet is working. I, but would you, I, you're going to stick your hand and pick up your poop with your own hand. No, fuck no. But I'm, I'm, I will like, I, okay. First of all, I'm a Virgo. So like if I go in a bathroom and I, I, and I like, I check all the facilities. I check that the toilet works. I check that the sink works and I make sure the lock works. I do that every single okay. time. So like that would never happen to Dude, me. Dude, one time we went to studs in uh LA and to get our ears pierced. Oh, yeah. And I went in the bathroom and I kept I kept making sure the door was closed because my biggest fear is like someone walking in on me because that has happened to me more than once. Yeah. And so I'm literally peeing. And so I stood up and I my back is to the door and it just sounds really loud in there. Yeah. And I'm put like buttoning my actually my pants are, I think are around my my butt because I'm like trying to fix my shirt or something. And then I realize it's really loud and I turn around and the door's wide open. <laughs> Yeah. And anyone could have just walked up and see me standing there in my chonies. Winnie the Pooh. It's awful. Anyways, go ahead. <laughs> yeah, but yeah, I've seen girls do that. Or just people in general. They'll put their poop in a bag and then put it in their purse to take it home. What if it's a wet it. poop? What if it's a diarrhea? Can't pick that up, can you? <laughs> you know, fish it out like a fish tank? I didn't think so. so it's like picking up wet sand. It just keeps <laughs> seeping through your hands. I don't know. Speaking up slime, <laughs> like just like take your take this and go home. Like that's what I I I cop to it. 
But if it's a party, who knows? Maybe I wouldn't. So you talked about this girl. She said when you're pooping at a guy's house for the first time, and he doesn't have air freshener and she has like their body wash open. Me. I've done that she's shit. She's just squeezing That's it in the air. so fucking funny. I have done that. I saw that one. <laughs> That's real. You know, it works better. You pour it out in the sink and you let the water run. And then, and the, then you do that too. Get and it, you do that. Yeah, get the then aroma you, going. Yeah. You got to let it run and it'll, and then it, yeah. Mm -hmm. If they have a window, even if it's that little one above the shower, I go up there, I fucking open that bitch up. <laughs> <laughs> and I'll leave it open. <laughs> I've done that <laughs> search. And you know, what's so funny is now that I live in my own house, like in every bathroom in my house, I have a spray in there yeah, right. of some kind, a poopery. That a really works. Spray. Have you ever used it? Yeah, I have one. You got to spray it first. Then you poop. Yeah. There's rules. Yeah. You spray the water. So you spray the water and then when you poop, it creates this like scent layer on top and then it keeps all so as you're taking a shit, it's just catching all the stink under the water in the water. I did not know. And that. It's not for the air, you spray the water. Well, that's in my guest bathroom, so I guess it would only matter if one of my guests let me know if you sit in my house and you pooped here. Let me know if it worked. But I, I have like I have extra scent, like I have some Febreze cans, I have some Bath and Body Works, those little magic spray things, those things are fucking awesome. And then I also have poopery. The room wanted. sprays. Someone had asked what Bath and Body is. The room sprays. Room sprays. Yeah. They work. They like, pack a punch. I know I told y'all if you smoke the devil's lettuce, it works. It does. And also it works for poop. So. And it works really great too. Like you you just spray one and the whole it's thing more smells than like, enough. It like gets rid of it immediately. It's fucking crazy. So I have one of those in every bathroom. So no one has to struggle like that. <laughs> and like if they take a... Uh, poop in my house. I also have plungers in every bathroom mm -hmm. and I have extra toilet paper in every bathroom. Yeah. Because that sucks when you have to like plunge on your own. <laughs> you have to go and look for a plunger. <laughs> you have to go and ask for one. Um, can do you have know a plunger? <laughs> I clogged your toilet. Do you have a plunger? I just feel like someone who went before me, I just went pee. I just don't it's even like know. Clogged. I don't know. I don't know. Um, I wouldn't go in there though. I'll, I'll do it. I'll do it. I'll do it. It's fine. I mean, it was the last one in there that peed, but I'll take care of it. It's yeah, fine. It's, all, it's fine. I'll, I'll it's do not it. a big deal. Don't go in there. <laughs> Stop. <laughs> That's wait for. Okay, back to the story. Sleeping in a tent after prom. That's crazy. That doesn't sound fun at all. Not even a little bit. That's fucking insane, actually. And then also a barn. What the fuck? Where the fuck are you at? Like, where where did you go? Where do you live when you're in high school? Or you're the girl throwing the party as a barn. And to last cow night, farm. <laughs> not to be cows outside. By the way, if I checked the cameras and I saw you taking a shit on my property, I wouldn't invite you back either. <laughs> if I'm being honest. Um, in fact, I would honestly be mad and I would probably bring it up to you, especially if I was in high school and I saw that shit and I caught you on 4k taking a shit outside my barn. I'd be like, what's crazy is you're like, I don't know her well enough to poop, but you knew her well enough to take a shit outside on her property. That's crazy. That's crazy. <laughs> That's crazy. I don't think I've ever pooped outside like that. I've peed outside, but I've never pooped yeah, outside. Same. I don't have it in me, to be honest. You know, and like you have to go really, really bad and you're like, this is an emergency and like something bad will happen to me. I'll either poop my pants or I'd rather poop my pants or throw up than like, in that kind of situation, but who knows, honestly, if no, I was desperate I like that, outside, yeah. no, I know, but I'm saying like, I say that now, but if I was in that situation, if we're talking like when I had that six layer mac and cheese on Christmas Eve, I'd shit outside a barn yeah, too, probably. That's true. You had to take two showers. If it was taken, if the devil was taking hold of me like that, I'd poop outside too. I, but to be fair to the owner of that house, I also wouldn't invite you back. At that point, I would just go inside. <laughs> I would rather poop inside, too. Yeah, I'd rather be like, hey, do you have a bathroom? It's all right. I'll find it. And I just run inside. <laughs> like, I just go inside. <laughs> like, I'm trying to think if I've ever had an emergency like that at someone else's house. Like, thankfully, well, the one I told y'all already was the one when I went to the Long's Drugs on the North Shore. My bad. <laughs> to the guy. You all right? When I came out. Okay. <laughs> Don't watch me do things. How about that? <laughs> You're in there for a really long time. <laughs> and I looked fucking pale. And then I went to a wedding. <laughs> I went to a wedding and I had a dress on and everything. Dude. Sweated it with a sweaty jean jacket on. Yeah. Sweat through my jean jacket. That's how intense it was. Like, dude, poops like that. I'd like, 
I feel forsaken, like when it's happening to me. Like I literally feel like God has abandoned me. <laughs> like there is no, there is no God. There is no higher power, clearly. <laughs> and if there is, he's cruel because why is he doing this to me? <laughs> That's like how I feel when I have shit. Like I feel so fucking dramatic when I have poops like that. They're just like so horrible yeah. like it takes over your whole body it's, it's crazy just like that's what i said like the devil is literally taking hold of me it's fucking horrid <laughs> it's so bad so i empathize with being like gotta poop gotta poop gotta poop yeah. and then you just go when you gotta go you gotta go i guess so if that made sense to you in the moment i guess okay but <laughs> i would have pooped inside the house at least she didn't say anything to you like if she did catch you if she did see you on the camera, at least she didn't say anything. To yeah. You. And also like having cameras outside your barn. That's smart. You should have went and pooped where like other animals are pooping. <laughs> that's you gross. Go, you go in the horse stall and just like poop on it. Take his shit in there. You're like, well, obviously there's a horse. Like maybe he did it. No, I think it was the horse. She goes, no, it's definitely your, one of the cows. And she goes, I don't have any cows. And she's like, oh, oh. That's interesting. Hmm. Do you have any coyotes? That's my, that might have been <laughs> any coyotes. <laughs> any coyotes that kill your cow dad when he's playing your <laughs> the banjo? Voice, Protect, voiced by Sam Elliott. <laughs> protecting the chickens. <laughs> because his son's a, <laughs> a, a selfish hooligan. bitch. <laughs> a fucking partier. Dude, I literally <laughs> got a comment on one of my older like one of my tiktoks recently okay from a few weeks ago and someone was like um this video was so funny i almost forgive you for what you said about tom petty so i may re-follow you i'm like this person <laughs> literally unfollowed me because i was talking about a cow dad and and i just basically said i don't know who the fuck tom petty is like i was just talking about <laughs> because you made up tom petty and johnny cash but he sounds like johnny cash in the song well, all of that aside, like I'm talking about an animated cow <laughs> that plays the banjo. Like, who gives a fuck? Like, who fucking cares? Like, who cares? Like that person literally unfollowed me because they were so mad that I didn't know that Otis's dad was singing a song that was not by Johnny Cash. I think that's the least of my worries in that situation. I want to know what he's doing playing the banjo. <laughs> Where does he get off? With his hooves that look like mittens. Like, how does that work? You know what I'm saying? Like, <laughs> even his coloring. Look at the colors of him. <laughs> and he has an udder and he's fucking, he's a Cows bull. Cows are girls. <laughs> <laughs> a lot of other issues at hand. When your cow dad dies. That feeling a, when? That feeling when your cow dad dies. That's such a fucking vibe kill. <laughs> Party's over because my dad decided to die <laughs> like, after I was playing the banjo Ugh. by the chicken coop. Anyways. All right, guys. That's going to do it for this week's episode of Two Idiot Girls. Yes. I hope you enjoyed it. If you want to listen to other episodes, you can stream them ever. You can listen to podcasts. And the video version is always on our YouTube channel. But other than that, we love you and we'll see you next time. Bye. Bye. Bye.